Story recapped here. Today I'm going to show you a science fiction action film titled District 9. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A TV documentary discloses a series of interviews taking its audience on a trip down the memory lane about Wiccas, the MNU operative and a starship carrying 1.8 million extraterrestrial creatures from two decades ago. A starship shocks humans as it brings itself to stand still midair at the city of Johannesburg in South Africa instead of stopping at Washington, Manhattan, and Chicago. News around the planet reports that the starship stays afloat for three months without interfering with the humans down below. With a lingering curiosity and argument, humans eventually unbolt the gates of the spaceship and discover a population of deceased and malnourished extraterrestrials. Humans think it is going to be a historical encounter and a scientific breakthrough. The humans, concluding that their leaders may have died of malnutrition and disease, enslave the aliens who, in any realm of possibility, could not go back to their home planet because of an irretrievable starship command module. After some time, the government permits the creatures to abandon their ship and relocate them into a chronic area in a barren military compound with congested cabins in Johannesburg. The residents claim that the government strictly ensures the absolute separation of aliens and humans in Johannesburg. Still, their efforts went for nothing because the Nigerians feel tired of the lack of civilization and humanity among the extraterrestrial creatures, who operate their unique arms to steal and kill whoever goes against their instincts. The Nigerians denominate them as prawns as they settle in consuming garbage. They lament that the aliens take everything in Johannesburg into their possession and turn it into ruins. The extraterrestrials took Johannesburg upside down with robbery, arson, rape, and murder, adding turmoil to the already miserable place where militarization and lawlessness prevailed. In the middle of chaos and dystopia, Multinational United, a private company that builds and sells weapons of destruction, enters into an agreement with the government to reduce District 9 to ruins to coerce the aliens to transfer into a more habitable area. The government plans to restore tranquility, pacification, and order among humans and aliens. MNU is instructed to do its job by evicting the whole population of aliens using a legalized OYU protocol. MNU appoints the primary role of the demolition to Wikis van der Merva, a smart man with a gentle disposition. Wikis is a loving husband to her wife, whose father works as the head of the command in MNU. Wikis, assisted by Kubis Venter, the head of the military operations, regulates the demolition and eviction at District 9. He feels oddly and awkwardly optimistic about the demolition that before they started deploying, Wikis starts questioning the military operatives about the unnecessary load of bullets in their pockets. The forces head on convoy to District 9 using military trucks and airplanes, and even before their first diplomatic agreement, they met hostile and violent extraterrestrials on the way. Even though Kubis and his troops believe in an armed eviction, Wikis pursues to make it diplomatic despite the hostility of the aliens. His team's violent correspondence subsequently killed most of their men. While serving the warrants and searching for illegal items inside the pods of the prawns, Wikis encounters a warlord named Obisano, who markets interspecies prostitution, cat food, and weapons to the aliens for their survival. After passing by Obisano's territory, Wikis' team found a shack with millions of alien offspring fed off a dead cow's protein. Wikis continues their eviction with all the remaining aliens in the area, and the documentary team records a child testifying that the weapons were small but destructive enough. Later on in the documentary, an analyst claims that the MNU took the contract because they were primarily drawn to the lethal force of their weapons. Still, the MNU had to study alien DNA for that biologically designed warcraft. Meanwhile, Obisanho's gang roams around the demolition area holding a firearm party, making the aliens more agitated and hostile. Wikis and Kubis unexpectedly end up in front of the shack of starship pilots, where Kubis ends up killing one of the pilots. Wikis is able to get inside the hut, where he meets Christopher, the only living pilot of the alien race. He finds a cylinder that contains a black fluid that subsequently sprays a volume into his face. He jolts uncomfortably as he wipes the fluid dry from his face. After he redeems himself from the pain and nauseating effect, he keeps the cylinder with the liquid in his vest for evidence. Wikis grows indisposed and sick while returning to the office after the demolition. He discovers unusual changes in his hands. As horror-stricken as he is, he forges home to deliver the news to his wife but ends up fainting at the surprise party that she has thrown for him. She brings him to the hospital, where the doctors report to the MNU that his arm has mutated with that of the prawns. Her attention is called by a group of men who wraps his vulnerable husband in a special suit and seizes him while she hyperventilates. The MNU undertakes a series of tests with Wicca's body and eventually retrieves the cylinder of black fluid in his coat. By then, they suspect that Wicca's is becoming treacherous against MNU for not submitting the cylinder to the lab. 
The head scientist confirms beyond doubt that the alien DNA has finally taken over his veins, muscles, and half of Wicca's body functions. The flabbergasted Wicca struggles with all his might and resists the experiment, but his father-in-law decides to capture all the alien material from his body. Wickus musters his strength back and escapes from the MNU lab. He attempts to return home but finds MNU agents there. He miserably runs across the city as a city-wide manhunt is being held against him. He finds temporary refuge in the slums of District 9, where he idles his night away. In the morning, he comes across the familiar shack where Christopher and his little son reside. He comes inside and is dumbfounded to see several computers reading incomprehensible code. He concludes that Christopher is one of the alien's leaders and works underground the shack to make the command module work. Christopher reveals to the poor Wickus that he can help him go back to the human state using the black fluid he confiscated days ago, but Wickus has to compromise to help Christopher fuel up the engine. Wickus admits to Christopher that the lab took the black liquid from him when he was captured. Christopher feels hopeless as they don't have any weapons to ransack MNU. Wickus remembers Obisanho and sprints there with Christopher. They hit upon a group of men mocking Wickus for allegedly engaging sexually with an alien, but after losing focus, Wickus manages to steal alien weapons from Obisanho's camp. Obisanho curses him and shouts a promise to take revenge and eat his mutated arm for power when he meets them again. Wickus and Christopher triumphantly transgress against MNU's headquarters and steer to the laboratory, where they begin their search for the cylinder. Christopher loses his focus on retrieving the cylinder after seeing the remains of his race in the laboratory. Christopher and Wickus end up fighting after satisfactorily taking the cylinder and returning to their shack. Wickus ends up knocking him over and runs the engine of the command module himself. The military operatives raise one of the engines to the ground after a blow, and Wickus collides together with the command module. The MNU operatives, which Kubus led, arrest Wickus, but Obisanho's gang takes over Wickus after defeating the MNU operatives. Believing that eating a limb will give him destructive powers, Obisanho orders his gang to shear Wickus' arm. While that is happening, Christopher's son operates the command module and sets a mechanical suit that attacks Obisanho and his gang. As Wickus is set free, he enters the battle suit and comes to rescue Christopher from the MNU. He activates all the destructive features of the battle suit and starts to slaughter the rest of the armed men. He collapses with a sniper's blow and begs Christopher to move back to the ship's module. Christopher objects but without a choice, he leaves and promises to come back to reinstate Wickus' body. Christopher and his son victoriously leave Johannesburg with the starship, and the humans watch in awe and satisfaction as it ascends out of their sight. Meanwhile, the mechanical suit ejected Wickus after being disfigured. He quietly drags his aching body away from the suit until Kubus appears and enervates his powerless body. Kubus contemplates bringing him back to MNU but opts to shoot him. He was about to pull the trigger when other prawns emerge to Wickus salvage and dislime him. Later that year, analysts and Wickus family and friends confide to the documentary about the possible whereabouts of Wickus, who has long disappeared. They conclude that Wickus must have been hiding in the mother's ship or was held captive by MNU and the government. The documentary also shows that Wickus workmates exposed MNU's biological corruptions and system anomalies. Finally, it shows Wickus' wife holding a metal rose which she claims to have been left by Wickus on their doorstep. Her speculation could have been confirmed as his husband, who loves making her handmade gifts, sits on a junkyard in Johannesburg while holding a metal rose, completely mutated. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.